I am here with Mason Stevens. Hello, Mason. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, Trevor. I'm doing great. Cool. Where are you from and what brought you here? I am from Somerset, Kentucky, so I'm a Kentucky boy. I started working with Trevor at the Stephen Foster Story way back when in 2016, and we really just clicked. And when Trevor opened his studio, I you know, always admired his work from afar, but then you came to me uh, with the offer this summer of coming to work with you. And I, I had my doubts and my reservations because I've never taught before, but uh, you just had this way of kind of putting those worries at ease. And I have never looked back since I started here. Woo! And we're glad you didn't because we love having you at Soma. What is your artistic background and what draws you to work with a studio like Selma? Well, I started acting when I was younger with like Missoula's Children's Theater and some local places in town, but I didn't really get heavily involved in acting until I got to college and started taking, I, I majored in, uh, I, I had a major in performing arts with the Concentration Musical Theater. I also uh, auditioned and uh, accepted a spot on the intro improv troupe at Western, and I think that was probably, once once I was on the improv troupe, that was the thing that really sparked my love of performing and my love of comedy and just being spontaneous on stage. Um, I was on that improv troupe for all four years, and I've kind of been seeking that that adrenalized uh, high ever since of, of performing, and I find that at Selma. Every day I get to be with the kids and play those games, I feel that same level of just like um, bliss. Oh, nice. Um, I think the kids would totally agree. I think they also well, yeah. have a great time in your class. <laughs> uh, what's a piece of advice that you would give young artists? A piece of advice I would give, um, and, and this is a hard one, but when I first started performing, I had like zero confidence in myself. Mm -hmm. I um, had a hard time seeing my strengths because I was too busy focusing on what I wasn't good at. And that's natural, of course, because the longer you perform, you're only going to get better. But I would say um, experiment. Do not be afraid to try new things and find that thing that you're good at and, and just champion that thing and run with that thing. And don't be afraid to um, laugh your strengths because you everyone has some. Mm -hmm. More than one, I would say. Everyone has many. And so don't, don't get too caught up in the weeds being like, oh, I'm not good at this thing. Or I'm not good at that because... Uh, that's time you could spend getting better at those things. <clears throat> right. Well, uh, I would say you only have strengths. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what or who influences your teaching style the most? Hmm. Uh, I had, during my time in college, when I was on the improv troupe, um, I had a lot of older members on the team that really poured into me and helped um, really build up my confidence. Um, names you, you may recognize, Trevor, Stephen Corfidge, Samuel Monem, Isaiah Fish, people like that who came before me who were mm -hmm. like, look, we've been where you are. And it is scary, but you just have to go out there and keep trying and keep building that instinct for confidence because it is not impossible um, also, I gotta mention my twin brother because we've been uh, horsing around since day one, uh, joking back and forth, and he's always been my go-to person anytime I write something or want to perform something. He's my, my first audience I bring it to, and so it is nice to have that person that you can go to like that. So he's probably, I would have to say, probably my biggest influence. Nice. Um, if you could have dinner with one artist, living or dead... Oh Who would it be, and what would you talk about? I love the band, the 1975. They're my favorite. And I would have dinner, of course, with all of them, but if I had to pick one of them, it would be Matt Healy, the lead singer. Um, I love his style, his, just his panache and his confidence, and he's funny. I feel like I could just pick his brain and learn a lot. Um, and as for where we would go, I mean, you can't go wrong with like Mr. Gaddy's, you know, I, would, I love the buffet, that just cheapo style gets me going. And hopefully, <laughs> and hopefully he would pay for it because he's rich. 
What's been inspiring to you recently, whether it be book, TV, movies, games, uh, or anything, etc.? Uh, I mean, not to go for the obvious, but um, where we just uh, had our run of Salem, reading The Crucible, I, I read it once in high school, but reading it again, um, as I had to for writing the narration and everything, was just opened so many new windows in my mind. I never really thought about the story that way. And it it is such a connected story. I, the way I've described it, it kind of touches the pulse of a lot of things in American culture that um, makes it so relatable. And it has kind of opened up all these little windows in my head with all these stories that I'm working on currently or all these ideas that I've thought about that I haven't really put to paper. Um, I don't know, it's just sort of awakened that that creative spirit in my head. I think reading a good story can, can do that. Well, Mason, you sure are a good story yourself. And it has been so wonderful being here with you today on this little podcast episode. So thank you for coming on. And we look forward to hearing more from you soon. See you soon, Trevor. See you soon, Mason. <laughs> <laughs>